This painting, Yandina Cows, is a painting I painted a little while ago. Uh, it was based on a trip that I did up north to the Sunshine Coast, to the Sunshine Coast hinterland, and um, I saw a pasture of cows with some really nice light um, coming from the back of the cows, so I was really getting a beautiful painting. Well, I saw a beautiful painting of cows in this lovely silhouette. Um, so there's some really nice things about this painting that I wanted to um, have a go at. Uh, the painting is in two parts, so this will be part A and obviously the next part will be part B. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy this uh, painting sequence. Hope you have a go at it. So this is my, my quick rendition. I don't know if you can see that. If uh, you can't, I may just turn one of the lights down or off or adjust it so that we um, just knock back uh, knock back the intensity of light. I might just turn these lights away. That probably gives you a little bit more uh, idea of what's actually happening on the page rather than the intensity of the light. Okay, I think that's a lot better. So I'll just can complete some of these little elements. There are one or two little cows floating around um, in the back and the front. I'm not going to paint it exactly um, how I see it because um, I think it's just overly worked with too many cows and I'm, I'm tending to shift some of these um, animals around too just just to make it less less saturated with all of these uh, with all of these cows so I'll just show a few a few more and then we'll get into it okay a lot of this mid-ground these hills I'll, I'll sort of make up as I go uh, there's a little bit of a tree about there. Again, not being too accurate. I don't need to be too accurate with these um, with these sketches. It's really just about getting the general um, characteristics um, in place, and then the rest it'll just be worked out as I go. Um, so I really want to just get the the, the, the character of the, the painting rather than every last detail. So as you can see, some of my line work is fairly loose and purely because I'm trying to just explore some of the, uh, pick out some of the opportunities that I see that might, might, I might want to tackle. There's a little bit of stuff at the back, about there. Uh, there's an interesting area through here that I'll play with. And there obviously are some shadows creeping down the hill there. So that's okay. Our sky is fairly light. Um, I'm just wondering, maybe another cow for good measure. Just out of, sh maybe just out of shot. Down here somewhere. So this is the one that might give us a bit more of a definition as to what's happening. So, cow, bit of a horn, bit of a ear. Hi. Something like that, maybe that heads to the yeah, we'll see how we go. Something like that. Okay, so that'll do something like that. So I'm going to start obviously with um, my white colours. I'm not going to talk too much. I think I'll just paint along and just hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy the demo. I'll make some commentary as I go, but I, I'll tend to sort of just um, paint and get absorbed in the thinking part of it. And um, hopefully, hopefully you can sort of make sense of it all. And we'll see how we go. So normally I tend to start with some really light washes like this. I might add a little bit of warmth to it. Uh, the, the only problem with that is that it tends to make the painting, the paint go a bit of a greeny colour. That's okay. Let's just start. Here we go. So, oh, 
a bit of dirt crept in straight away. Keeping this fairly light. The cerulean, the cerulean blue that I'm using, in fact, is a fairly like it tends to separate a hell of a lot. Um, I don't know why, but it just it really struggles to um, it really struggles to stay in one uh, sort of in, in a mix. So I find that it really just it goes to town and separates some. I'm, I'm not really enjoying that part of it. So there's that first piece. There's a there's a, a much lighter tone through there. So I'll just work on this at the moment. Um, and I've got to quickly make up a distant a distant series of hills. Uh, and trees, the trees, those soft trees in the background. So I'll make up a really nice quick light grey, very, very light, a little bit of burnt sienna just to knock the trans uh, knock the purple off it. Um, and I'll just play with it down here. Just to drop that in for those trees. There are some through there. Okay. So I'm dropping them into soft, soft wet tones because I really want to play up those um, soft edges, um, knowing also that there are there are some warmish green tones in there. So I've just added a bit of ochre and I'm going to play around with those in that foreground edge as well. Like so. I've actually got a little bit of white on my palette and, that, and that's that's not intentional but if it's there I'll, I'll use it just to sort of uh, work with it and see what happens. So that's all going to dry a lot, a lot lighter than what you see. So a slow build up. Okay, then we've got a gorgeous sort of uh, light, light ochre. And not only just ochre, but it's a very light ochre. And there's probably a little bit of cad, cad yellow in there just to sort of give it a bit of a bit of a vibrant tone. Now that's starting to get muddy, so I might just clean up a bit of my palette so that that blue doesn't drain into all those colours. I mean, there is some there. But I'll clean it to as, to a great degree. So let's get those colours happening again. So I'm happy for the background to sort of start drying because I'm really going to be working now on those lower areas, the paddocks into the foreground. So I've got some of the dirty ochre, some of the cad yellow, get that nice rich colour. And the yellow ochre I can reach any time. So let's just start that, shall we? Okay, let's go see what happens. Could have used the hairdryer to get right up towards that, but I've decided not to. So let it, letting it, letting it bleed. That's okay. I'll come back through there with some dark tones anyway. So we're just going to start getting a little richer with ochres and yellows. And 
leaving leaving the odd little white speck here and there getting in some of the earlier greys that I made up in there as well at this stage too um, there's some of these little greys and things like that just pop a few of those in there You don't have to worry about painting the cows because, or painting through them because they are a lot darker than the rest of the, a lot, a lot darker than the rest of the um, painting. So or the, the background, so you can afford to get in and just muck around with light tones green into some of those spots just to sort of have some tones dropped in okay there is a little bit of alizarin in there sort of a lilac -y, light lilac -y tone so I'm just going to mix up that's too much So I'm just going to come through, do some dry brush like so, continue painting through, maybe a bit of cerulean blue with the, with the ochre to give me a little bit of a green in there. A couple of brush strokes in there for that. So again with that lighter wash. About here is where I'm going to start seeing some more of the green. So I'm making a mix with a bit of viridian. It's a, a, a bit of yellow ochre, so I don't get the absolute fluoro green coming through. But there's a sort of a transition happening. this color richer and richer as it's coming towards you towards you around that particular cow getting a bit more richer with colors a few ochres a few burnt siennas and even a little bit of cobalt just to sort of add a touch of the brown to it
yellow ochre with the viridian richer, a bit more yellow ochre, a bit green, a bit of the cobalt, and this is where you're sort of dropping in. Just dropping in little bits. Now this is wet into wet, so there's still other tones I want to throw in here. But as I'm working my way to the bottom, um, I really am trying to include as much of this dry brush as possible. Um, A little bit of the brown, a little bit of the cobalt, just so that you're staying in the in that dark zone, and a few a few little sprinkles. Uh, even darker still afford to get a little bit darker still maybe even a bit of the French Ultra French Ultra and a bit of burnt sienna a little bit of water same again remember this is just the first wash so you can you can certainly play with these spattering type effects in that first wash. You can back there as well but I probably wouldn't do too much. And that's just sort of that first preliminary wash where you're working your way up through the blues. You've still got the trees on the hills to put down. You've got a lot of these, now these cows are gonna be a lot darker, but we've still got an opportunity now to do the, the second layer of shadows, shadows in those trees, even in the distant hills as well. I'll do that in the second layer. So this is the first layer at the moment. So I'll just take a, a dryer to that, get that dry. Um, might have to just, be aware that I've got this dryer going and it's probably going to deafen everyone, so apologies for this. So that's, that's relatively dry. Stick 
looking at down, make sure it doesn't come popping up again. Okay. Let's get my brushes sorted out. Okay, so the next next phase is really with this first wash, you're really just setting up the whole sort of overall tones um, and the merging mergings of the first tones of the first layer. So really we've picked up a little bit of the background blues and the ochres happening in those trees at the back. We'll give them a little bit more definition as we go. Um, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, we're going to also then pick up some of the edges of this, uh, that the pasture at the back, and we'll start adding some darker tones to give us some definition of the edge of this hill. We'll also start with that shadow tone to pick up some of the shadows across the trees. And then moving forward, we're going to pick up uh, a few of the tusky grasses and the shadows um, working their way forwards to this sort of um, sort of light grey lavender tone that's sort of permeating in that middle area there, which is sort of a neutral colour, but it just had this slight pink tone to it so that I've dropped that in and then you come racing to the uh, to the further forward to these this initial sort of um, light green with a touch of ochre in it all the way through now we're going to add further richness of color over the top of that not too much but um, just something that uh, will help us sort of um, um, yeah just enliven and give a bit more the texture to the ground so it's not just some single tone with some spatterings of color but we're trying to work that up a bit so this next layer uh, we're now starting to work with our mid tones we've got some trees that are really um, setting up our background i'll start working on those um, in a in mid tone way so it'll be just the early sort of first tones and then we'll um, yeah we'll sort of advance from those tones in the background uh, to the trees and then move forward so what are we going to do? We're going to let's just start at the at, at, on the hill at the back, uh, not the hill, the um, the trees at the back right. Uh, I'll just grab my rag because I'll probably need that a bit more. So um, okay, I'll just give this a bit of a clean as we're going. Okay, so we again we'll work with a little bit of cerulean, a little bit of cobalt, just as a little, uh, just as a mix between the two. A little bit of each. Let's just make it enough so that I'm not going to run out. So cerulean, cerulean rather, cobalt. There, a little bit of water to give me a little bit of movement. I should stop saying little because everything is little. Small amounts. Some alizarin crimson, just to give me more of a purple tone. I'm after a bit more. So now it's really just using that tone as a very. Oh, I need to wash this one out too. Sorry. So I made this purple, but I really need to wash it right back so that it's not as intense as you see it there let's get that clean sorry yeah my palette's fairly dirty so let's clean my brush okay a bit of water now I'll take a little bit of the color that i mixed very thin very thin wash of that purple and i'll start going back over some of these trees that we had over here so i'll pick up some of these edges and just start playing with a bit of water and starting to just form those trees up again very light through there Nice and soft, and I'll start taking that color through there. Although in parts, I'll just make it a little bit darker. Just 
put a bit of that in. So this is now using a little bit of that rich tone. Remembering that we're not trying to paint the exact replica of uh, what's uh, or, or what the photograph is, but we're wanting to just play with the the, uh, the the sort of the characteristics of what what that's about. So here we go. We'll just start a few of the. Like so. Now we're going to be painting over the top of this again, so this is really just a, a, a s sort of a setup. Uh, color in that sense. There's a gap there. I need to make more of that tone. So cobalt, cerulean cobalt, alizarin, back to that purple, a bit more alizarin. Yep. Throw in a little bit of those those green tones that I had already. Actually, I'll throw some warmer ochres in there because I can always come back and add some greens and cooler tones later. So some stickier tones so that they're not all too um, necessarily very wet otherwise it'll just create some um, cauliflowers for me I will be going back over these again but this is just sort of setting up the next the sort of the second level of tones A little bit of warmth happening in those trees. Uh, a bit more of the cooler green. And this is really just a sort of Block in some of the some of the tree through there. As the as the tones are drying, I'm just dropping in some stickier colors. That's just sort of allowing the, the coolness of the background to drift in with some of the warmer, richer hues of the, the, the trees where the sun's hitting some of the leaves in the trees. So the fact that there's a combination and mixture of, um, you know, ochres and the blues is, that's fine. I'm just, in a way, I'm just helping the, um, the sunlight come through by adding some of the warmth. We're going to be actually putting a lot of those into much darker shadow, 
but I'm just adding the warm tones in there uh, at the same, you know, while I can at the moment. So just dropping some of those on now. A bit more. And then um, making up that, I'll make up that purple again. Cobalt, alizarin, cobalt. Oh, sorry, cobalt and alizarin and cerulean rather. Just um, playing with a little bit of, of the tone on the hill. Using, using that tone to just pick up some shadows and edges. A bit different grain. Sort of starting to define the edge through the front here. And remind you, this is a fairly quick painting, so you know I'm not going to get overly worked up about whether it's super you know, super accurate. It's really just you know, a quick impression. Add a little bit of the purple. So that tones a little bit of alizarin and cobalt. Washing that down, but merging, merging it back into previous some of those out now just add water really thin it out wash it out it's actually a series of rower lines down down that side so just a little bit of a bit of that purple to carry through there then if I can still add some of that purple into some of these damper tones so there's a continuity back in jumping down to this side So these are just sort of subtle color changes, just always using the same sort of homogenous uh, color tones. I don't really want to start picking up uh, and playing with 
new color tones that are too too different it's just really we'll, we'll still add more tones as we go you know darker tones as we go uh, but at the moment I'm just really happy just playing with the same tones that I've got in the in the rest of the painting so greens warm greens with ochre these lavender colors which are mixes of cobalt and alizarin uh, washed down uh, little hints through there just get them mixed up again again drop them back in just so you've got a continuity of tone color all the way through going to be moving to the foreground and this is where I really want to start playing with some nice rich um, cad yellows this is a, um, a, a this is a Windsor yellow uh, Windsor Newton Windsor Newton yellow hue uh, cad yellow uh, it's it's just a, Co a Cotman series paint it's sort of it's, it's okay I find it's okay mind you you know it's not a professional color but it's it's fine It's not like your Hansa Yellow Deep, which which I prefer is uh, I prefer to use, but I'm happy just to sort of work with what I have. So I'm going to start throwing in some of these nice, rich colours as well. Got some nice greens that sort of do float around. In, in and around the foreground and midground. Just working with just working with what I've got. Overlaying it here and there. Again, bringing this this color through, dry brushing it here and there, so it's not totally so it's not totally just uh, a, a, a continuous color. Dry brush, bringing some of these elements dry brushed as well. Had yellow, a little bit of Viridian green, just as a very nice, almost a very neon y sort of colour. So I'm making another mix of that. And as I work my way to the foreground, I'm just getting richer and rich, richer with that colour. And my brush strokes are now starting to get. A little bit more, no, I wouldn't say random, but just sort of more vertical as opposed to just horizontal. So as my brush strokes move up and down, I start to get a little bit richer with my. And, and mixing some of these colors so I'm introducing ochres you can sort of see that the saturation is starting to pick up a little bit as you moving your way to the foreground Occasional bit of extra tone, just so that there's a sort of a, a richness that's sort of racing across. The image. A bit more 
Put the cad yellow, viridian green, cad yellow again. So colors are getting richer, bit more yellow ochre. We don't want just those luscious, serious fluoro uh, greens, but something now that's, you know, helping us get some character into the tussockiness of the grass in the foreground. And again, making it nice and thick, thick, almost straight out of the pan, a bit of the green into the ochre. Um, even with a little bit of alizarin in there, just to sort of add a touch of the warmth into those colours. A bit more alizarin, even. Just gives you that sort of warmer tone. And you can sort of pick up some of these other specks of dirt and unevenness of tone on the foreground. Of water just to help that play that along. And so here we go. So there's our foreground. I could probably go back and, you know, with a bit of a couple of sticky sort of mixes, just add a sort of another grain in and around the place. I'm just adding, as you can see, a little bit of drying the colour out of my brush and just going back with some quicker raspier dry brush strokes just to sort of get some other textures into the, um, the grass character, the sort of tuss tussocky grass character in the middle there. And it just sort of gives you a feel for the, the fact that the field the field is not just a series of you know tones but there are also some textures in there. Work, work that in with my finger as well. Um, that's okay. That dark tone is fine, that's sort of a lavender colour up to railway lines in a tree. So that's this next layer. We'll just give that a bit of a dry now and um, set that. So if you can bear with me.
Sorry about that. So that's the next layer. And we're essentially now sort of working in through the darker tones. So we'll be picking up all of the uh, the mid darks and then the dark darks. So obviously we're now moving towards really defining these cows, uh, some of the cows in silhouette in the foreground. We've also got some of the uh, darker elements of the trees in immediately behind uh, the cows up on this little hill. So we'll sort of work that up to give us a nice sort of silhouetted um, uh, definition. Again, we've got to be careful though about making the background too dominant. I don't want to get too dark with that. Otherwise, it's going to take away from the, the contrast that I'm trying to, uh, to work with on the cows in the foreground. So uh, we just have to build that up slowly and um, yeah, just slowly to see how it works. I really like these blues and the purples and the depths of those trees. So I want to make sure that I keep those and don't lose those too much. Um, so it will be now a case of working with, I've got a number of different brushes, one that I'll be working with now is really going to be <coughs> excuse me the one that I'll be working with now is really just this um, this rigger uh, that and one of these other smaller brushes so I'll work with those two just to sort of work my way through these trees and then I'll start looking at the definition of these cows in a tick so um, hopefully hopefully that makes sense <coughs> and the colours that I'll be working with now are really going to be a series of greys just to work up the greys that might have grey with the green emphasis or a grey with the blue there might be some grey with brown but generally everything's going to be um, held together by a, by a series of greys that, that that sort of connect across the picture and, and down down to the foreground so hopefully them um, hopefully you sort of got on, on top of that so again it's it's the same as before uh, I work I'm working with the mid grays so they'll start as a cobalt cobalt with a little bit of a alizarin just to give me my my purples it's just uh, the alizarin the alizarin crimson I have is not the greatest of alizarin crimsons it's uh, I won't really worry about too much about brands but yeah it's not a great one it's not a, it's definitely not a professional color and so um, it really <laughs> it lacks in pigment but it also um, lacks in, uh, in in sort of staying together it's more of a fugitive whichever way you look at it the, this alizarin just tends to just separate when, when you mix it with cerulean blue for example they just separate like anything so they're not the greatest of uh, well it's a great color it's um, just becomes awkward trying to manage it I suppose um, on the palette 